Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Uno Minda Limited Q4 and FI24 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sunil Bora, Group Chief Financial Officer from Uno Minda Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Zico. Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to all the participants. On the earnings call today, I am joined by my colleague, Ankur Modi. We have uploaded our financial results and investor presentation for Q4 on the stock exchanges and our company's website. I would like to begin by giving some insights on the economy, followed by the current scenario in the industry and our financial and operational performance for the quarter and FI24. Post that, we will open the floor for Q&A. The global economy is displaying signs of recovery with inflation moderating and being projected to grow at a rate of 3.1%. However, amidst the prevailing global uncertainty, India's economy continues to exhibit remarkable resilience. In the third quarter of FY24, India achieved a growth rate of approximately 8.4%, surpassing expectations. This growth is driven by factors such as continued demand momentum across various industries and segments, increased government capital spending, rural demand also rebounding. India's manufacturing activity reached a 16-year high in March with PMI index of 59.1. This surge has created more jobs with unemployment data showing sharp reduction, overall reflecting stronger growth in new orders. All these factors pointed to a sustained growth. India's GDP growth for FY24 is expected to be 7.6%, surpassing estimates by most global agencies. Speaking on the auto industry, the industry witnessed robust production volumes growing 10% year-on-year for FY24 and 21% year-on-year in Q4 FY24. With strong domestic demand and increasing share of exports worldwide, India has positioned itself as a global automotive hub with a promising future. In the passenger vehicle market, SUV share continued to grow, now holding a substantial 50% market share. During Q4 FY24, production volume increased by 10% year-on-year, reaching 13.4 lakh units. For FY24, the PV segment witnessed a growth of 10% inching towards 5 million units. Notably, both retail sales and production of passenger vehicles achieved an all-time high in FY24. On the back of improved vehicle availability, a compelling model mix, and successful launch of new models. Additionally, sustained demand growth in our underpenetrated India market, strategic marketing efforts by OEMs and the government investment in road infrastructure contributed to the overall sales and production growth. Moving on to two-wheeler segment, in Q4 FY24, the production volume stood at 55.24 lakh units, delivering a strong growth of 26% on a year-on-year basis. For the year ended March 2024, the segment achieved highest production in last four years with 21.4 million units, recording a 10% YOI growth fueled by improved rural demand, enhanced model availability, the introduction of new products, and a positive market sentiment, alongside the burgeoning EV market and strategic premium segment launches. On the CV front, for the quarter ended March 24, the production volume stood at 2.88 lakhs as compared to 2.9 lakhs in the same quarter last year. The segment is witnessing stable volumes. However, our outlook remains optimistic. With expected upswing in industrial and manufacturing activities, the segment is poised for growth. For FY24, the production volume stood at 10.66 lakhs, a growth of 3% on a YOY basis. The growth is attributed to the segment's adeptness in leveraging government tenders, improved road connectivity, and strategic bulk deals. Talking about electrification, in March 24, India achieved a remarkable milestone with electric two-wheeler sales surpassing 1,36,000 units, marking an impressive 50% YOI growth. Throughout the entire financial year, sales soared to nearly 
9.4 lakh units reflecting a substantial 30% year on year increase. This surge was partially driven by customers pre purchasing vehicles ahead of the expiration of the FAM2 subsidy, complemented by year end discounts. On conclusion of FAM2, the government has announced a fund limited scheme with a total outlay of 500 crore for the period of four months with effect from 1st April 24 to 31st of July 24 for faster adoption of electric two wheelers and three wheelers to provide further impetus to the green mobility and development of electric vehicle manufacturing ecosystem in the country. The road to electrification is inevitable and India is poised for substantial growth with strong emphasis on sustainability and thrust on local production. Industry Outlook. Heading into FY25, the Indian auto industry is poised for growth amidst a mix of optimism and challenges. The excitement around new product launches, particularly electric vehicles, sets a forward looking tone. Manufacturers are gearing up with better supply chains and an array of models to meet diverse consumer demand. Economic growth, favorable government policies, and an anticipated good monsoon are expected to fuel demand, especially in the rural areas and the CV sector, which is closely linked to infrastructure projects and economic activity. Market sentiment is cautiously optimistic, with the industry banking on improved customer engagement and financing schemes to boost sales. However, it faces challenges like high base in PV segment and intense competition. The focus is on overcoming these hurdles with innovation and strategic market engagement, aiming for a balanced growth across all segments. Coming to financial and operational performance, uh, you may refer to slide number five. We have recently secured allotment of strategic land parcel of around 94 acres from SSIDC at IMT Kharkoda in Haryana. This will help expedite our ongoing and future expansions. A part of this land has been designated for the Greenfield Alloy Wheel Plant of 120,000 wheels per month, announced in Q2 FY24. Post the groundbreaking ceremony, the work has started at the site. As you know, we have been proactively securing land parcels in all major auto hubs to be ready to meet growing demand. Last year, Uno Minda had acquired 86 acres of land at Kade City Industrial Park, Pune, followed by recent acquisition of 37 acres in Hosur, Tamil Nadu, and now 94 acres in IMT, Karpoda, Haryana. While we continue to evaluate uh, more land at other locations, the proactive land acquisition and greenfield projects demonstrate our commitment to staying ahead of the curve in the rapidly evolving Indian auto landscape. During the quarter, we entered into technical license agreement with Star Charge Energy PTE Limited to manufacture and sale of electric vehicle supply equipment in India, further building on the e 4 wheel specific portfolio. We will discuss this in details in subsequent slides. We have completed purchase of 26% stake in Minda Westport Technologies Limited in April 24, increasing stake to 76%. Minda Westport has now become a subsidiary and will be consolidated in financials from Q1 FY25. The compressed natural gas powered vehicles in India have increased by 32% in FY24, in line with increasing CNG penetration. Minda Westport revenues have also grown by 156% to 277 crores in FY24. With better availability of supplies, new CNG model launches for PVs as well as CVs, strengthening of CNG infrastructure and the CNG penetration. It is further expected to increase levels of about 18% by CY27 from current levels of 15% penetration. This presents an exciting opportunity for Minda Westport going forward. Coming to financial and operational performance, you can refer to slide number 7 and 9. At consolidated level, revenues from operation for the quarter ending March 24 increased by 31% year on year to 3,000, roughly 800 crores from 2,900 crores in Q4 FY23. The growth was evident across all product lines, with particularly strong performance from EV products, lighting, switch, sensor, controller, and alloy wheel businesses. Some of the businesses which played a significant role in the substantial growth are primarily from one, capacity expansion and ramp up in four wheel alloy wheel, two wheel alloy wheel, four wheel lighting wheel plant, and four wheel Chennai plant. Second, increase in revenues from EV specific products under UNO, MINDA, Q1 controller. Third, market share gains in four-wheel lighting business. Fourth, increase in fit value with higher sales of SUVs in passenger vehicles and premium model in two-wheeler. And last, increase in exports for seating and two-wheeler switch business. 
as you would have noted ebitda for the quarter was a record at 474 crores reflecting a 48% year over year improvement from 2019 crore besides benefit of operating leverage as normally expected the current quarter also benefited from yearly price increase settlements finance costs have increased to 32 crore in comparison to corresponding quarter last year on account of incremental borrowing for capex and working capital the depreciation has increased in line with capitalization of new projects the share of profit loss of associate gavis for quarter jumped to 58 crores as against 28 24 crores in q4 fy23 as denso roki westport trmn and tg all businesses witnessed significant growth along with turnaround in minda onkyo as you would see there is an exceptional income consequent to the decision of honorable supreme court that interest on qvd portion towards epcg liability is not payable the related provision has been reversed and this being a, a one time item uh, has been shown as an exceptional income the profit after tax which is uno minda share for the quarter was at 290 crores as against 183 crores however excluding the exceptional item from the profit the quarter would have been 269 crores as against 290 crores which is a growth of 40% year on year 47% sorry moving to financials for fy24 we have achieved consolidated revenues of over 14000 crores for the year ending march 24 registering a growth of 25% on year on year basis we would like to highlight that industry volume growth for fy24 was 10% and against which we have grown by 2.5x significantly higher than our long term guidance of 1.5x the ebitda for the period grew by 28% at 1585 crores registering ebitda margins of 11.3% the profit after tax which is uno minda share for the period excluding exceptional item was at 861 crore as against 654 crores in corresponding period last year reporting a growth of 32% Coming to the business segment wise performance starting with switches if you can refer to slide number 12 our switching system segment performed exceptionally well generating 963 crores in revenue for quarter representing a significant 25% of our consolidated revenues the segment grew 14% for fy24 generating revenues of 3663 crores as against 3203 crores in fy23 This growth can be attributed to smarter switches with increased number of switches per vehicle. Additionally, exports in the tuner segment emerged as a major growth driver, signifying our global competitiveness. Moving to lighting business, it continues to be a key growth driver for Uno Minda, generating impressive revenues of 972 crores during the quarter, representing a significant 26% contribution to our consolidated revenues. For full year, lighting business achieved revenues of 3,368 crores, growing by 31% on year-on-year -year basis. As communicated in past, we had some significant strategic order wins over past few years. These businesses are gradually commencing production. This is significantly propelling the growth trajectory of the lighting business, particularly in the four-wheel segment. Our lighting business has delivered significant growth in recent past, with four-wheel lighting business almost doubling in less than two years. This success is driven by our market leading innovative lighting solutions to that empowering OEMs to differentiate their offerings in the marketplace. We are currently supplying three long tail lamps and one signature LED front DRL for EV model of the largest TV EV manufacturer in India. This unique signature DRL comes with welcome and goodbye sequence and charging indicator. Buoyed by success in Indian market, some of these models are also being launched in global markets. with manufacturing in these global geographies we are confident that this positive momentum to continue fueled by sustained sop and continuous expansion of our market share moving to casting business it delivered a robust revenues of 770 crores in q4 accounting for a substantial 20% of our consolidated revenues out of 770 crores four wheel law will contributed 436 crores two wheel 204 and casting business 130 crores The casting business revenues for full year grew by 30% to 2830 crores. Both dual and four alloy wheel has been witnessing good growth supported by capacity expansion. Four wheel alloy wheel capacity stands at 390000 wheels per month running at almost 100% utilization. The 60k expansion and power is delayed with 30k expected to commission in second half of uh, FY25 and the work on remaining capacity will commence depending on the necessary approval for land acquisition. 
we started construction for 120k wheel per month greenfield plant at upcoming auto hub imt karkoda which will be commissioned in two phases of 60k each the first phase is expected to be commissioned by q2 fy26 within alloy wheel we are seeing preference for different varieties during the quarter we have received a large order for diamond finish alloy wheel from a japanese oem for the face lift and a new ev model alloy wheel penetration in pv has reached around 45% from 15% when we entered the market along with the growth in market we have cemented our position as the largest manufacturer of four wheel alloy wheel in the country at our two wheel alloy wheel business the additional capacity of 2 million was completed in the last quarter and is having stable operation this expansion brings the total installed capacity for two wheel alloy wheels to impressive 5.4 to 6 million wheels per year depending on the weight of the wheel with this additional capacity coming in we have broken into the top three two wheel alloy wheel manufacturer in terms of capacity and market share additionally as you would have noted board has also approved expansion of the plant by another 2 million wheel per annum with an investment of 300 crores over last few quarters we have significantly diversified our customer base with around five key customers with business in both scooter and motorcycle segment during the quarter we received order for american two wheel oem model manufactured in india Moving to seating business, a key contributor, uh, another uh, for our overall performance, generated around 264 crores in revenue, representing 7% of our total revenues. For full year seating business, revenue stands at 1,100 crores. Besides our existing incumbent two-wheeler OEMs, we have started supplies for two new age EV OEMs. These supplies for new incumbent two-wheeler OEM will start in next six months. We are happy to inform that we have secured an order for a mechanical suspended seat. and pneumatic suspended seat to be supplied to a domestic cv oem sop of the said order is expected in q3 of 25 until now we have been supplying suspended seats only to the export market exports continues to play a crucial role in driving the growth for seating business we once again achieved export of around 200 crores from our seating business alone looking ahead we anticipate seating business to maintain a healthy growth momentum fueled by new order confirmations and upcoming execution of new orders along with suspended seat order for the indian market moving to acoustic uh, segment generated revenues of 213 crores in q4 representing a stable 6% contribution acoustic business also grew by 13% on a full year basis to 133 crores while the indian business continues to demonstrate industry led growth the european subsidiary clarton horn continues to experience ups and downs clarton horn did close the year with positive note with a positive ebitda and pat for the quarter as well as for the year moving to other products and businesses uh, which have achieved revenues of 613 crores for the quarter contributing 16% of overall top line out of 613 crores 130 crore was contributed by controllers uh, 107 by sensors 110 by blow molding 68 crore by adas 55 crores in the new ev jv besides above the sales include aftermarket trading external sales from uno minda capilac and engineering sales in europe and batteries for aftermarket revenues for other seg- business segment has grown by 50% to 2236 as we continue to expand in emerging technologies over the years we have built a very robust portfolio of sensors comprising of engine and exhaust sensors active safety and comfort sensors transmission and suspension sensors cng ev sensors wheel speed sensors and the latest addition is tire pressure monitoring system revenues from sensors has grown significantly from 160 crore in fy21 to over 400 crore now we have combined adas division with sensors from operation perspective together with adas sensor secured revenues of 600 crores our controller business continues to impress with an with achieving 375 crore sales for fy24 uno minda ev systems also clocked in 193 crore revenue in first full year of operation itself moving to after market and industrial revenue slide number 14 and 15 you can refer to in terms of our revenue pie for the quarter ended march 24 oem business accounted for 93% and after market at around 7% our after market division revenue stood at 2 to 3 crore for the quarter our interest sales currently represent approximately 14% of total revenue demonstrating steady growth in this segment while the international market holds strategic importance for our future expansion it is worth noting that our domestic business has been experiencing more pronounced growth moving to our debt levels our net debt as of march 31 was at 318 crores compared to 1078 as on march 
The net debt has increased on account of expansion capex as well as expenditure for land bank, primarily at Pune and Hosur for around 220 crores. While sustaining and growth capex has been financed from business cash flows, the expenditure primarily on land bank has resulted in incremental debt. Our net debt to equity stands at healthy 0.25. We have achieved Rossi of 19.8% basis analyzing profits uh, of basis uh, annual profits of FI24. Kindly note that capital employed considered for calculation does include the capex for land bank as well as CV, which is currently not generating return. If one were to exclude only the strategic land bank, the Rossi would have been around 20.3%. In terms of return on equity uh, for FO24, it stood at around 19.4%. The board has also recommended a final dividend of 1.35 per share, which is 67.5% of base value. Total dividend along with interim dividend already paid will become rupees 2 per share, which is 100% of the face value. We have been consistently increasing our dividend payout ratio from 10% in FI19 to 13.4% now. In last five years, our dividend payment amount also has increased fourfold from around 28 crores in FY19 to the estimated payment of around 115 crores for FY24. The board underscores our commitment to returning value to shareholders on a consistent basis. Moving to EV, you can refer to slide number 15 and 16. Revenue from EV tooler OEM increased to 180 crore in Q4 as against 167 in last quarter. We witnessed growth in EV-specific as well as traditional products sales to two-wheeler EV OEMs. The revenues from EV two-wheeler OEMs are expected to continue to increase with SOP of various orders. We have built a strong order book for EV-specific products as well as existing products from EV OEMs. We have received further orders from our existing products from OEMs across vehicle category. The SOP of these orders will start in gradual manner in FY25, which will further boost revenues from the EV sector. Building up our EV specific work portfolio for four wheeler, we had entered into a TLA with star charge to manufacture and sale of EVSE in India. The EVSE comprises of wall mounted AC chargers designed for convenient home charging. These chargers are usually sold along with EV to customers by OEMs to provide ease of charging at home. Star charge is a global leader in electric vehicle charging infrastructure and microgrid solutions operating in 67 countries and regions with manufacturing facilities in USA, Vietnam, and China. With millions of EV charging stations installed worldwide, Star Charge is at the forefront of providing cutting-edge charging solutions for diverse applications. Star Charge has been a strategic partner of 60-plus well-known OEMs and multiple renowned energy companies globally. The potential fit value of these EVAC ranges from roughly 14,000 rupees to 70,000 rupees, with estimated application factor of 40%. We have multiple RSQs in hand for EVAC with high probability of winning some of them. According to the IEA, most EV charging demand globally has been met at home or at work and not by publicly accessible chargers. Unomenda, in partnership with Stargas, aim to revolutionize such home charging solution, paving the way for faster cleaner mobility adoption in India. In terms of capital expenditure, refer to slide number 24. As informed earlier, we have started construction at IMT Karpoda for our Greenfield Alloyville plant for four wheelers. Though there was a delay in starting construction due to land acquisition, we will fast track the CapEx implementation given the land acquisition is completed and machinery order is in progress. The phase one of lighting for all plant at Kate is expected to commission in second half of FY25 with construction going on in full speed. Regarding four wheelers, this plant, Farooq Nagar Gurugram, phase one comprising of sub part manufacturing is completed. Given the humongous opportunities coming our way, we will continue our expansion drive in FY25 as well. The capital expenditure has already announced projects like four wheel law wheel at Karkoda and Bawal, four wheel Atlantic plant at Pune, Uno Mindarika plant, Faruk Tanga, Uno Mindar EV systems will be undertaken in FY25 as per plan. We are likely to further expand in Indonesia and aluminum die casting four wheel with fresh capex announcements in FY25. As mentioned earlier, pursuant to additional orders, the board has also approved capex of 300 crores for expansion of two-wheel alloy plant at Supa uh, to add a capacity by another 2 million wheels uh, per year. This will take the total capacity to roughly 10.5 to 8 billion wheels per annum. For FY25, uh, the sustaining capex is expected to be around 450 to 500 crores, 
and project capex of around 850 to 900 crores, including the expansion of two-wheel alloy wheel project approved today. In addition to above, we will continue building strategic land bank in locations like Gujarat, Osur, and other related regions. Moving to strategic business updates, the board has approved increasing stake in PG Minda from 47.93 to 49.9 by buying 1.97% stake in promoter held entity at a concentration of 17 crores. The remaining 50.1 stake in TG Minda is held by the JV Partner TG. With respect to merger of POSAI entities with Uno Minda, we have received NOC from stock exchanges and approval from lenders, creators, and shareholders. We have also moved the second motion application to NCLT. The next date of hearing is in first week of August, and we expect that post the hearing, it will take another two to three months for merger process to get complete. Moving uh, forward, uh, the outlook continues to be promising with supporting industry volume guidance, commissioning and ramp up of multiple new expansions, namely EV plants, uh, tool and four wheel alloy wheel expansion, lighting plant to Gujarat and Pune, etc. While we have been guiding on long term growth prospect of 1.5x of industry growth, we expect it could be higher in the near term. As you know, while quarter on quarter there is variance in margins due to inherent business modalities and challenges, we would like to maintain our annual EBITDA margin guidance of 11% plus minus 50 basis point range with a bias towards higher end. With our existing diversified product portfolio, new product technologies, we are confident of sustained outperformance over long term. With this, I would like to now open up the floor for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star N1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star N2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mumukshman Lesha from Anurati Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity uh, and congratulations on strong margin performance and entry into the four-wheeler EV segment, sir. Uh, so, firstly, yeah. on the gross margin side uh, this quarter, uh, can you quantify the impact of price hikes? Sir? Sorry, come again, Mooch. Uh, can you uh, quantify the impact of price hike uh, uh, during this quarter, sir? There is no price hike, Mumuksh, uh, that's what I, I, I think we said in the last call also. There are uh, normally, whatever are the customer price settlements, they normally tend to get uh, settled in the uh, last quarter of the year or maybe third quarter of the year. So you do see a uh, little more uh, benefit in the, in, the, in the last quarter. If I have to quantify that impact, that is roughly around uh, 30 odd crores uh, during the quarter. Okay, sir. So now on the four wheeler EV uh, with the star charge now partnership. Uh, so uh, just want to understand how do you see the revenue trend for the star charge, and also uh, now uh, with the four wheeler EV focus area. Uh, so over a medium term, uh, uh, any guidance uh, you want to share how you plan to ramp up like in two wheeler you mentioned earlier. Yeah. So uh, I think Mumuks uh, by. Uh, End of next quarter, I think we will have uh, much, much, much better clarity because we have just signed the TLA and uh, the team is in process of uh, preparing the detailed project report. Uh, post that, we will have some uh, visibility, but still, you know that our dependence is there always on the OEMs and we normally don't comment on the, on the numbers uh, in terms of the expected revenues. But uh, in terms of the entire product profile, because the star charge is only uh, one part of it. We already have a lot of other uh, products uh, which currently are uh, in the works and uh, some of them are also in, in operation. So maybe we'll give you a full picture uh, where we have our results uh, call after Q1. Got it, sir. Uh, sir, Lightning segment is seeing a strong growth. Uh, so just want to get a sense, uh, uh, how is the profitability in that segment? Uh, uh, you know, earlier it used to be like a high single digit uh, sometime back. So uh, how that has changed, sir? Is this the uh, lighting as a more profitable segment among the other segments, sir? I wish <laughs> it was. 
but i think uh, we have discussed this in in past also uh, first of all uh, just to put some background we know that the kit value for the lighting products as it moved from halogen to led has increased significantly and with a lot of uh, bought out component in terms of uh, uh, electronics and i think uh, that has been the key reason why we said that uh, the margin in the four wheel lighting business specifically which is seeing that kind of growth is below average margins so which it continues to be there what it just and lastly i mean on lighting part uh, i mean are we seeing a very good pick up uh, on the new orders can you just guide how do you see the next year in terms of growth for this business so this business is uh, i think we have been saying uh, very uh, candidly that we are very very bullish on this business uh, with multiple uh, i would say uh, tailwinds and also in terms of getting more business tailwind in terms of uh, transition from halogen to led increase in kit value going multifold and also share of business gains so we are very very optimistic especially in covid lighting business you know we are currently in process of uh, commissioning uh, not constructing not commissioning constructing our third uh, plant for lighting for us once that is up and running that will give us the give us uh, the boost in fact uh, even at the plant in uh, gujarat uh, which we have put up it's almost running now to the capacity in the plant was commissioned only what one and a half years back uh, or two years back so this business will continue to grow and our goal has been to reach 20% share of business uh, at, at the first first milestone and i think we are on track to achieve that right right is there any any guidance any really growth guidance for fy25 uh, what kind of growth you can see for lighting sir i think most uh, same thing he said we okay. don't comment specifically on numbers so my Got apologies it. for that yeah uh, no thank you so much for the opportunity thanks so much thank you the next question is from the line of siddarth bera from nomura please go ahead yeah so thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on a great set of numbers uh sir on this lighting side first uh, just to continue the last question uh, i mean if you look at the current uh, quarter and just analyze it so it uh, it implies a close to 60 70% growth for the next year and uh, we also have this new plant which is coming up uh, in the second half which you mentioned so uh, i mean can you throw some more light on to which are the orders which are ramping up here and does this mean that i mean this segment can grow at more than 30% probably in the coming few years So absolutely uh, siddharth uh, first of all thanks for the compliment uh, in terms of uh, growth uh, whether it is 30% or 20% you know that uh, a lot also depends on the industry volume so it's very very difficult to say whether it will be 20 or whether it will be 30 but definitely it will outperform industry growth by margin if you see last year itself uh, the four electric business have done annual revenues of roughly around uh, uh, 1200 crores odd and uh, the last quarter itself uh, we have done something like 380 390 or close to we can say 400 crores so with that itself i think uh, we are poised for that uh, kind of number what we said but uh, a lot also depends on the uh, industry volume so while we are optimistic maybe we are able to uh, achieve that but very difficult to comment whether it will be 30 or it will be 20 or 25 Okay, so uh, can you provide the breakup between four wheeler and two wheeler, and where are you, are you seeing the most traction here? Obviously, four wheeler lighting is uh, the more uh, traction, Siddharth. Uh, two wheeler lighting, we already are like twenty five percent plus kind of market share domestically, and uh, we already have much higher penetration in two wheeler in LED. So there is not much of scope in terms of value enhancement. So it is the four wheeler lighting business which you will see outperforming by a huge margin. Answer. How much was it in the last quarter? Four wheelers. Four. Four wheel lighting last quarter. I said I think three eighty three ninety crore was the four wheel lighting business in India. Okay. Okay. So sequentially, the last quarter Q three also you had mentioned about three forty crores from four wheelers. So has the delta come more from the two wheelers? Is it? No, no. So three forty to three ninety. I'm saying is only uh, four wheelers. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, our revenues have grown from 850 to 970, so nearly 120 crores. Yeah, so that also includes uh, Siddharth, uh, the overseas uh, lighting business in ASEAN and also in Europe. So that is overall group lighting business. Oh. What you are referring to is the Indian uh, 340 crore. That's the Indian lighting business. Okay, got it, got it. 
So second question is on the seating side. Uh, again, I mean, uh, uh, we have seen good improvement in industry volumes in two wheelers and CVs, but uh, our li seating revenue seems to have been quite flattish uh, sequentially. So uh, some thoughts here. I mean, you have said that uh, you have won a couple of orders. If you can quantify what is the size of these orders and how to think about the growth here. So the new order which we have got this from the Indian CV uh, customer is roughly around 80 to 100 crores a year, depending on the on the volumes. Uh, plus uh, the quarter on quarter number, I appreciate yes, it is uh, flattish, but uh, that's what I think we have seen in terms of uh, the CV volumes also, which have been actually negative in the last quarter. So the sitting business uh, revenue is almost half comes from the uh, CV OR segment. Plus, uh, there has been uh, some headwinds in terms of the exports. While we are the global uh, supplier to JD, and there is a lot of exports, uh, that has not been seeing significant volumes of take. In fact, it has been more static to negative so in terms of volume. So, uh, while uh, we have got business in hand, I think it's the volumes which, you know, are not in our hands. I'm not trying to justify, but I, uh, that is the key reason why the revenues are flattish. Okay, okay. So lastly, I mean, the two-wheeler earlier capex, which is said about 300 crores, I think the last capex of similar size was about 190 crores. So why the capex intensity seems to be slightly higher here? And lastly, yeah. on this aftermarket revenues, we have not seen much improvement over the last one year. Revenues seem to be around that uh, 270 to 80 type of run rate. So any thoughts yeah. what will drive this or what are you thinking here? Thanks. No, no, you are right. I think both the questions are very, very genuine to that. So first of all, the two-wheeler lighting uh, project, which was announced at 190 crore, it was actually ended at 225 crores. Uh, by the time it got completed, there were significant uh, cost overruns. And for that 225 crores, uh, the land was already part of the first uh, acquisition. So there was no land cost in, in, in the second phase. Now when we are buying, uh, setting up this uh, new expansion, we have to buy this 13 acre of land from uh, MIDC. Plus, over the last uh, three years, there has been a significant increase in the cost of uh, uh, construction and also uh, the machinery, etc. So, while we tried and uh, tried to optimize a lot of uh, things, plus also what is happening is in this uh, expansion, there is a, uh, a powder coating uh, extra which was not there in the first phase. So, if you see there is one specific customer so who uses this uh, wheel, uh, two-wheeler wheel uh, for a uh, scooter, with the different technology of uh, coating, which uh, the cost is higher than the uh, traditional uh, covering, while it does get compensated through better pricing, but the overall cost increases. So that is in terms of uh, capex. And in terms of aftermarket, yes, you are right. Uh, the aftermarket uh, revenues, despite our significant push uh, in terms of increasing the sales, have not uh, seen a significant traction uh, over last uh, one year. Uh, but if you see the industry, barring one or two players, I think the numbers have been like uh, that. People have not grown significantly. So while there was a significant growth year before, this year, uh, which is FY24, has been flattish. But we are expecting FY25 to be much better than what uh, we have done in FY24. Got it, sir. Thanks a lot. I'll come back again. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Raghunandan NL from Nuwama Research. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, and congratulations on strong set of numbers. So may I request, uh, sorry to interrupt you, sir. May I request you to use your handset, sir. Your audio is slightly muffled. Uh, is it better now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, sir. Uh, firstly, uh, within the other segment, uh, uh, you know, the sensor, controller, and ADAS part uh, have done very well this year. How do you see the outlook for FI25? And secondly, in terms of the EV order book, uh, congratulations on the increase from 3,300 to 3,700. Uh, if you can give some more color uh, with, with, you know, like uh, addition for orders of uh, traction motors, motor controller, how do you see the ramp up for this particular opportunity? And if you can 
indicate you know how many customers you have got uh, on the motor side uh, just some color on how you see the growth ahead yeah yeah thanks uh, ragu uh, in terms of the other segment as you know these are businesses which are primarily the sunrise businesses uh, which is uh, maybe sensors and controllers the application is going very very high all the ev products are also part of uh, this segment so we are very optimistic in terms of uh, the growth of some of these businesses and as we move forward normally our barometer is once a business crosses 10% of total revenues we start uh, showing this separately as a segment so i am pretty sure in next few years uh, we should be having one or two businesses who will actually cut into that uh, category and in terms of uh, the ev order book uh, the large part of the orders which we have secured in the last quarter is primarily from the uh, existing uh, businesses which are the ev agnostic businesses while they are from all the ev players uh, but uh, nothing significant from the ev specific product uh, perspective and in terms of uh, the motor business uh, while we have got a couple of uh, new customers on board it the sop of uh, those the onboarding will happen in, in, in business secured in the last quarter primarily the sop will happen sometime in uh, uh, the second half of fy25 i think one customer is in q2 itself and the rest i think are in the second half of fy25 in terms of uh, motors and uh, sorry in terms of motor controllers and others uh, there is going to be a, a significant ramp up in the current uh, year as as i have discussed uh, there these some of these products have gone into production in the last uh, year and some of them will get into production in this year and as i said in the first year itself uh, this uh, jv has clocked revenues of close to 200 crores and uh, we are pretty optimistic that uh, it will have a significant growth in the coming years uh thank you for that sir and a couple of quick clarifications one is uh, that 30 crore price settlement which was received in q4 uh instead of looking at q4 gross margin it would be better to look at full year fy24 margin uh, to get a uh, you know normalized uh, level would that be a right understanding absolutely ruby i think you are you have said what i wanted to say in fact uh, that is what i always say that and i think i said in my commentary as well that uh, we are in a business where quarter to quarter you might see there is a variation in terms of margins because we are not a uh, a b2c company so there are uh, times when uh, the settlement takes time there are times when prices go north there are times when prices go south uh, in terms of the commodity pricing so there are various factors but everything gets even out on a full year basis so that's why it's very important to see the full year profitability and that's where we have improved by almost 25 basis points uh, on a full year basis so i would say that is more uh, realistic and i appreciate uh, you asking that question uh, thank you for that sir and uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, because you are adding capacities to meet the strong demand there will be some upfront cost but but you know like over a period of 2 uh, 2 uh, to 3 years how do you see the triggers for the uh, margin no we are very very uh, optimistic uh, uh, and as i said and as i think i said in the commentary also while our margin guidance uh, has been 11% plus minus 50% i said uh, for fy 24 25 uh, we would tilt it towards uh, the upper end of that uh, range and as you move forward and as, as you rightly mentioned a lot of these projects once they come on to stream normally we see the third year of uh, production as a stable third full year production as a stable operation and that's where you expect that uh, business to deliver its uh, expected uh, volumes and uh, profitability so as we move forward and as these capexes all come online gradually ideally we should see some uh, uptick in margins uh, uh, benefiting from the operating leverage and also scales higher scale uh, just on the margin side a last question uh you know in terms of uh, the revenues are going up for ev specific parts so so uh, any benefits we can expect either in 25 or 26 from the pli incentives uh so as we speak a uh, lot of our products are actually uh, while they are eligible in pli uh, we are at a threshold of that uh, 50% dva plus minus uh, 3 4 percentage points so we are working on to see how we improve our dva to meet that criteria 
of domestic value at 50 percent i think that is the only key reason which is uh, holding us back there are some of the products which we are expecting approval from the government uh, maybe in this quarter itself but they are not very significant so i'm not uh, counting on that so and secondly uh, for uh, there is one product which qualifies uh, the dva major product i'm referring to is motors but for that you need to have stable operations uh, because they see an audit what is your exact uh, dva etc so that also hopefully we should be able to apply in the next year got it sir thank you so much and uh, best wishes thanks thanks sir thank you the next question is from the line of ashish jain from macquarie please go ahead Mr. Ashish Jain, your line has been unmuted. Okay. Would request you to unmute your line from your side, please. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. We are unable to hear you, sir. May I request that you use your handset? Am I audible now? Ah, uh, no, sir. We are unable to hear you, sir. Yes, 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 So may I request that we move to the next participant, uh, Mr. Ashish Jain. We would request you to rejoin the queue, please. The next question is from the line of Ashutosh Tiwari from Equiris Securities. Please go ahead. Mr. Ashutosh Tiwari, may we request you to go ahead with your question? Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, hi, sir. Congrats on such an exemplary performance during the quarter, yes. and also probably uh, nobody would have imagined the kind of growth we have seen in lighting segment few years back, or even sensor controller. I think uh, these are really very, very uh, strong growths we did over the, over the last few years. And first time we crossed the lighting revenue, crossed it was such a segment revenue. So um, I my first question and and probably questions on these two segments only. How do you see going ahead uh, sensor control shaping up for the next few years and also lighting segment? So thanks, Ashutosh. Uh, lighting segment uh, definitely continues uh, to grow uh, and will continue to grow as we speak over next four to five years. The key. Uh, reason I think we have just discussed also is uh, the kit value gain, the new business, and also the expected share of business gain. Uh, moving from 14, 15 percent share of business to 20 percent is not going to be easy. While we do believe that we do have uh, got uh, businesses in fold, and it's only a matter of time uh, we will uh, reach that uh, goal post of 20, 20 percent share of business. The kit value also has been expanding, so uh, we do expect uh, this momentum to continue. but uh, as i said the only uh, what we call the moving part is uh, the volumes of the model which we have secured the business so if if that uh, remains on track uh, i'm sure we will be able to deliver the growth uh, in lighting business as we have done in past uh, what was the second question sensor controller i think we have done roughly uh, 775 crores put together Yeah, so sensor controller also uh, also is doing phenomenally well. Uh, sensor uh, and controller business uh, both are uh, uh, seeing a significant addition of uh, new business. Controller, uh, you know, some of the EV product business which are part of uh, UML are also into that uh, business like uh, your telematics or wireless charger. Uh, there are a lot of other uh, businesses which are part of uh, this uh, business which continues to grow, and also now we have. Uh, aligned adas uh, business also with uh, the control because there's also uh, sorry sensor which also has lot of sensors and related uh, stuff so sensor and adas internally we have aligned as a single business and as as sensor also uh, the number of sensor application has been consistently going up and as you may have noted we have also added one more product to our kit which is tire pressure monitoring system sensor yeah. and uh, we have already secured a business from one of the largest oem in the country So hopefully that should also go into production sometime in the next year. So I think you mentioned that in the fourth quarter the controller was 130 crores and sensor was 100 crores, right? No, no. Yeah, fourth quarter, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you are. So we are already hitting 920 crores run rate in the last quarter. So I think uh, this business also overall will grow very strongly. Like, can we assume like say 
a 20% plus kind of growth rate in this business over the next few years? I would uh, definitely like to work on 15-20% kind of growth, uh, assuming the industry volumes also support. Okay, okay. And lastly, um, on this alloy wheel, uh, four-wheeler uh, business, um, uh, don't you think that we are probably a bit behind in terms of uh, in terms of capacity addition because uh, the way is ramping up and the way we are operating? We probably have to fasten the things up. Obviously, there's some delay due to this land uh, equation and all. But going ahead, we'll probably we have to probably drive ahead of what uh, we're guiding right now. No, no absolutely, Ashtosh, you are right. And that has been the feeling inside the organization. Uh, because this is a business I, I we, we all know. Uh, we've been thinking very, very closely for the last four years. We've been running like hand-to-mouth situation. And this is not a good situation to be in. Uh, while it is good that before the project is announced, uh, even your surplus capacity gets blocked. But that's what the market is giving. And if we are not ready, we might lose the business. So we have been uh, now working very aggressively in even building this land bank. A large part of this is also identified for alloy wheel. So while we are putting this 120k project in Karkoda as of now, the space and everything what we have earmarked uh, can grow up to 240,000 wheels a year. In, in addition... We might soon have to even expand our uh, plant in uh, Gujarat, given the volumes are being ramping up there. So there also we might see some sort of uh, expansion in the uh, current fiscal year. So, but for your point taken, we have to be a little more aggressive in our capacity addition in the four rural segment. And just one more thing on this Menda uh, West Sport, that CNG kit business. You mentioned the sales was 177 crores in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Am I quarter? No, no, I just missed the sales number. You mentioned some sales number for full year. Full year. Full year. Okay, and that also will grow uh, quite fast. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, this it's a high margin business fast. as well, right? Yeah, a little, uh, obviously above average margin. And I am pretty confident over next few years, this also has a potential to 400 to 500 crores kind of 400. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks and congratulations and all the best for the next three, five, three to five years of growth. We are delivered extremely. Thanks. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Jain from Macquarie. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, sir. Good evening. Am I audible now? Very faint, Ashish. So let me try increasing the volume from my side. Yes, sir. You can go ahead. Sir, my question was again, you know, on the lighting business. Uh, is it possible to? You know, give a sense of uh, volume growth versus value growth that we have seen in the four wheeler lighting business, particularly. Very difficult to, uh, to say, Ashish, volume growth versus value growth, because even if this is the business currently we are, or the momentum we are in, even if the industry doesn't grow, this business will grow. But uh, only uh, issue is that the businesses we are tied up has to grow more. For example, and why I'm saying, and I think you would have heard in my commentary, I said we have got three like long tail lamps. Like these tail lamps, the cost is almost uh, 18 to 20,000 rupees, uh, almost like uh, per tail lamp. Whereas uh, the other model, if it's a halogen lamp, it's costing 2,500. So if the volume of that model goes up, then obviously your destiny is uh, linked there. So very difficult to say what volume will grow and how much uh, your sales will grow. Uh, but my point is, even if volume doesn't grow, I think this business will continue to grow. But only issue is uh, the growth of that high-value business, uh, which is not in our hand. And that's why it's very difficult to say. I think uh, the other colleague also has, uh, other friend also has asked this question, how much of uh, growth we should expect uh, in the next quarter or the next year. So as I said, while we are gearing up uh, our capacities for uh, the kind of growth you expect, but very, very difficult to say whether it will be 20% or 25% or a 30% growth. Right. So, but, you know, is it safe? So, given the kind of model launches we are seeing and particularly the product you spoke about, that is, uh, you know, really uh, seeing high penetration and all. So, is it safe to assume that the way industry is moving in terms of model launches and these kind of features, uh, this is like a structural thing and there's no reason for us to believe it will slow down? No, absolutely. If, if you see some of the global markets, you see the ASEAN markets, you go to Korea or Japan or other countries also. I am not count, looking at commenting on the developed world, which has more affordability. 
I am commenting on market which does not have more affordability there. Also, you see the long connected uh, tail lines is uh, penetration is very high. So yes, it might be a case where there may be a structural shift, but it all gets driven by the customer preference and also whether the customer is willing to pay that that uh, delta. But yes, it, it could be, but uh, difficult to comment on because as of now, not many vehicles have got these connected long tail lines or air lines. The second question was on switches business. Like if I look at the last uh, three quarters, uh, switches business has been you know pretty much flattish in that you know uh, 900 or so kind of time. So how are we seeing that progressing uh, from here on? Yeah. So switch uh, business, we all know that uh, we are actually having a alliance share uh, almost in both the segments, uh, be it four wheeler or a both are above 50% market share. So obviously to gain beyond that market share is difficult, but even if you see, despite that challenge, even on a quarter on quarter basis, this business has grown from uh, 930 odd crores almost and roughly like 3 to 4%, it has grown quarter on quarter. So I think uh, while uh, your point is uh, valid, but I don't think I can compare this business with the light business where this, there is a structural change. So, but if you see year on year, uh, on a full year basis, this business has actually grown 14%. Uh, whereas uh, the industry, if you see average blended of PV and uh, two-wheeler has not uh, grown uh, with those levels, uh, maybe it's like 8 to 10%. So still there is an outperformance in this, uh, despite, and this is despite the exports uh, are currently not to the quantum what we are expected. So this business definitely uh, is not, as I said, uh, in, the, in the very, very high growth trajectory by alloy like alloys and uh, uh, lights, but it will continue to outperform the industry volumes supported with uh, the kit value and exports. Got it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank Ashish. you. The next question is from the line of Rishi Vora from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is pertaining to uh, EV segment. Uh, can you just throw some light on how currently you are seeing the demand trends given the uh, reduction in the fame uh, subsidies? And also, in your order book, uh, can you broadly give us indication on like what amount of uh, order book is from uh, the incumbent two-wheeler OEMs and what part would be from the new age OEMs? So, Rishi, first of all, very difficult to comment on, on demand, and I think you would have seen consistently we don't comment on, on industry volumes, uh, what is the kind of penetrations or volumes, etc. Uh, we don't try and guess our customers. Uh, but in terms of uh, the EV order book, uh, remember, we normally don't uh, comment on uh, order book also, but we have started commenting on EV order book because there was a request from every corner to do that. Right. So I would request not to further ask to split that uh, information. So I, I think even this information, I, we have been discussing internally uh, as to how long we should uh, continue to give. Uh, and if, if you all of you are okay, I would at some point I would like to stop that also because this does not give a full picture of the organization because uh, we are uh, today almost a, a 20,000 crore organization and aspiri aspiring to become multifold from here. And uh, when I give only this uh, EV volume, I am commenting on only a fraction of the total uh, business, so which might be okay, which might not be okay. So I even mean, we are sort of trying to uh, to debate ourselves as to how long we continue this. But my humble request, please not push us to give a further split of these numbers. Uh, understood, sir. Uh, and uh, just on the uh, you know gross margin side, uh, you know we have seen uh, some uptick in uh, the metal base metal prices recently. Uh, obviously, uh, our alloy wheel business uh, will have some dependence on aluminium. But apart from that, would, which would be major commodities for us? And are we seeing any inflation currently uh, in, 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 in those elements? So, you see, this is part and parcel of life. Yes, you are right. Recently, aluminium prices have seen a spike. Uh, but uh, most of our uh, businesses, you know, uh, during this uh, commodity hike period post-COVID, I think three years back, we have tried to align all our contracts with the customers with the annual price escalation, quarterly or hourly price escalation clauses. So on a full year basis, almost 95% uh, gets passed through to our customers. So that is not a, a, any concern for us. Uh, so if prices goes up, we try and collect from customers. If prices go down, we share with the customers. So uh, from that perspective, uh, 
I think we are pretty hedged. Understood. And so just last uh, data question, what would be the full year revenues for four-wheeler and two-wheeler uh, loyable business? Uh, you might have shared, but I just missed that those numbers. For four-wheeler and two-wheeler loyable business? Yeah, revenues, full year revenues. Okay. So two-wheeler loyable business, full year revenues is uh, around 670 crores. Right. And uh, four-wheel. Four wheel is uh, roughly around thirteen hundred and fifty crores. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nishit Jalan from thank Access you, Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank go ahead. you for the opportunity. Yeah, just to correct the number which I have given, thirteen fifty crore was for Minda Kosai only. Yeah, Nishit, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, Mr. Bora, my question is that you have grown so so uh, sm uh, faster compared to the industry growth. What be your market share of departments now, uh, especially the bigger segments, the lighting, the law wheel, the tool, the or the seating? And uh, uh, your voice is very volatile. Yes, sir. Your audio is not clear, sir. May I request you to use your handset, please? Hello, I'm already in the handset. Uh, is it better? Yes, sir. It keeps breaking. Uh, may I request you to use your handset in case you're using a headset, sir. Thank you. Is it better? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, my question was that you have grown uh, ahead of industry and across almost all segments over the last few years. So just wanted to understand what would be your market share across different segments now, alloy wheel, lighting, uh, seating. Uh, 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 and maybe sensors and controllers, I would assume you are very small right now and there's a long, uh, lot of growth potential. So how are the market shares in these three categories are in both two-wheeler and four-wheeler and how it has moved in the last three years or any any data point you can give us on this would be very helpful. Yeah, so my, uh, the market share in uh, four-wheel, alloy-wheel is over 40% uh, as we stand today. Uh, in terms of market share for two-wheeler, we are Roughly at around 15-16%, uh, we are just uh, 6 billion and I'm analyzing the capacity, not actual uh, sales for 23-24, uh, uh, 6 million on roughly 35 uh, million kind of a consumption. Uh, we will be roughly at around 15% market share because I'm almost turning at capacity uh, for two-wheeler loyal -wheel business. In terms of lighting, two-wheeler, we are roughly around 25-26% and uh, four-wheeler, we are roughly around 15 16%, 16-17% now. And seating, you mentioned you are above 50% in both the categories, right? No. Seating, we are uh, above 50% primarily in CVOR, not in the two-wheeler. Okay. Okay. And uh, just, you just mentioned that uh, 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 one question was that uh, people of industry leading passenger vehicle OEMs are talking about a very, very low growth in the passenger vehicle industry this year. Even Siam has talked about only about 2-3% kind of a growth. Uh, are you seeing any 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 such slowdown in in the volumes, industry volumes, or on the production schedules? So, what would be your view in general about the about the industry growth? So, uh, as I said, uh, uh, we don't comment on uh, industry volumes, but uh, I can say what volumes we have been guided by the customers to plan for 24-25. Okay, uh, and they they tend to be uh, little low in. Uh, PV segment, which is uh, five to seven percent, and uh, for two wheeler segment, it is uh, seven to ten percent. But as I said, these are guidance from our customers to be prepared with the capacity. Now, whether how much actually will happen, I think uh, Got it. I think our customers are best yeah, yeah. to respond to that. Correct. Correct. And just uh, one number I missed out. What did you talk about the FI twenty five uh, capex? Uh, was it eight fifty crores per project capex and four fifty crores maintenance? Is that correct? Yes. So total thirteen hundred crores. Yeah, 13 to 14, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Nishit. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was the last question for the question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thanks, uh, uh, everyone. So I would like to thank everyone for joining on the call. I hope we have been able to respond to all your questions adequately. For any further information, we request you to please do get in touch with us. Stay safe, stay healthy, and thank you once again for joining with us.
Thank you. On behalf of Uno Minda Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.